Good day, ladies and gents, and once again, we're back together. We're looking at that Mpumalanga question paper from 2022. Of course, this is part of our prelim preparation. Of course, if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you hit that subscribe button. Okay, and uh, of course, you can always uh, <clears throat> tell as many people as possible about our channel. You know, tell them that you're learning great things from your favorite uncle. And uh, of course, um, you can get in touch with us. Uh, email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za and our website, www.mlungisinkosi.co.za. All right, so we're looking at Newton's second law today. Let's get right into it. So we're given two objects that are pulled, right, uh, over a straight horizontal surface with a force of 900 Newtons. They say the mass of object A is 130 kilograms and the mass of object B is 95, right? They say the two objects are connected to each other by an inelastic rope with negligible mass, right? So now they say the two objects move at constant velocity. Now, please always remember, once we see that they are moving at constant velocity, what this simply means to us that uh, uh, is that we know that uh, in this case, the acceleration is simply zero and therefore meaning that the net force is zero as well. Right, now they say state Newton's third law in words. Of course, if body A exerts a force on body B, then body B will exert an equal but opposite force on body A. Of course, there's, another, there's other ways of uh, expressing that. Uh, let's not waste time with that. Now, the next one says, uh, draw a labeled free body diagram to indicate all forces acting on object B. Now, the, the most important thing for you to, um, you know, to, to just remember is that they did say that our surface is a rough horizontal surface, right? So, of course, that does tell us that there is frictional force in this case. So, uh, on object B, what are the forces that are acting? So, we're going to say, uh, in fact, let's change the color of that. Okay, let's choose a rather more... Um, right, so in this case, so we're going to say, right, what are the forces? It's going to be the tension on the string, right? So in this case, remember that it will be pulled by the tension between the strings, right? But we also have frictional force in this case. So we know that we've got friction, okay? And of course, we've got the normal force in this case, um, yeah as well as gravitational force. So that's the force of gravity, or you can simply say this is the weight of the object. Okay, right. So, uh, of course, we did say that the number of forces that you're supposed to have will actually uh, be indicated by the uh, amount of marks that you are allocated, right? And please remember to always make sure uh, that you you draw lines with arrows in them, right? Uh, otherwise, uh, we will not be able to tell what the, um, you know, direction is. And as a result, you lose marks. Okay, right. And uh, also, just keep in mind that, um, you know, when, when you draw those lines, you need to connect them to that, uh, uh, you know, to that dot, okay? So that uh, you indicate that, of course, these are forces that are acting uh, on the center of gravity of that particular dot, okay? Right, now they say the next question, uh, calculate the magnitude of the frictional force uh, between object B and uh, the rough surface if the coefficient of friction between object A and um, the rough surface is 0 0.45. Now, I want you to keep in mind in this case, we've already drawn, um, you know, the, the friction or rather the, the, the free body diagram for body B, right? So um, how about we start there, right? So they said to us, we need to calculate the magnitude of the kinetic frictional force between object B and the rough surface, right? So um, now... We're going to say, all right, so if we look at for body B, uh, this is for body B, right? So we're going to say, look, we know that F net is equal to MA, 
But remember, because we're told that it's moving at, uh, um, you know, constant speed, we know that acceleration is zero. So we know that we're going to simply have tension, okay? In this case, of course, we're going to assume that going in that direction is a, a positive direction, right? Uh, because that's the direction of, the, uh, of my applied force. And in this case, it's moving towards the left, right? So I'm going to say tension minus the frictional force. If you don't mind, I'm going to call it FKB because that's what we're looking for. And this is going to be zero. Now, you agree with me that we don't know what the magnitude of the tension is, nor do we know the value of our, uh, of, of, uh, our frictional force. So I'm just going to leave it like that, right? So this is, oh, so this is for body B, right? Now, um, let's leave this as equation one. And then let's go for body A, right? So let's look at body A. In this case, when we look at body A, what are the forces that are acting on body A? We've got that applied force that's acting there. Uh, so let's say we've got the applied force. We've got the frictional force. Okay. But we also have the tension on the string, right? So in that case for body A, the tension was actually pulling body A back. We've got the normal force in this case, but we also have gravitational force. So we can say the force of gravity in this case. Right, now, um, so for body A, I'm going to simply say, right, we're going to take the sum of forces uh, in the, so F net is equal to MA. We know that A is zero, right? So in that case, we know that in the, uh, the sum of forces, going to take the sum of forces in the horizontal direction, okay? So, uh, so this is sum of forces in the horizontal direction. We know they're going to be zero. So I'm going to say force applied because that's in the positive direction minus the frictional force for body B. That's minus the tension, okay? So in this case, yeah, I'm going to leave tension as T and we know this is equal to zero. Now, we know that the applied force was given to us as 900, okay? And we know that the coefficient of friction is 0 0.45 uh, in this case. So we've got 900 minus the friction. So friction for um, uh, body A, all right? So remember that friction, because we're given the coefficient of friction, it's going to be coefficient of friction for A multiplied by the normal force, and that would give us the tension, right? Uh, minus the tension. So that would be 900 minus 0 0.45, right? Multiplied by. Now remember, because we've got only the normal force and the force of gravity, in this case for the you know, for the, uh, um, uh, yeah, for the, for body A, that is. So remember, they said that the mass for body A is at 130 kilograms, right? So in that case, we're going to say, uh, so the normal force would be 130 multiplied by 9.8, okay? And this would be equal to the tension. Of course, we can calculate this for ourselves. We can say, well, we've got 0 0.45 multiplied by 130 uh, times 9.8 and that would give us okay so that's going to give us a tension of 573.3 newtons so now we know the value of the tension right so once we found that tension uh, we know we can substitute it back into that uh, force over, I mean, into that equation, equation one. So we know that uh, tension would be equal to the frictional force on B. So it means that the frictional force on B would simply be 573.3 newtons. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Uh, that is how the cookie crumbles, right? Okay, so... Um, they say the rope 
uh, between the two objects suddenly breaks, right? They say use relevant law to describe the motion of uh, object B after the rope breaks. Now remember, once the rope breaks on body B, right? What was pulling it? It was being pulled by that tension. So if the rope breaks, uh, uh, block B would actually begin to slow down up until it stops, right? So in this case, we know that, uh, okay, um, uh, Block B uh, would slow down, uh, slow down until it stops, right? Until it stops um, uh, due to the presence of frictional force, okay, of friction. Right, now we need to use the law to show that so remember, according to Newton's second law, we know that F net is equal to MA. But this time around, what is our net force? Remember, there's no tension. So it means that friction would be the only force that is acting, right? So friction uh, would be equal to MA. So therefore, in this case, friction would actually cause an acceleration. And what type of an acceleration would that be? It would be deceleration or in this case, the body slowing down. Okay, right. Of course, we can express it uh, in however way you want. In this case, as long as you are able to state that according to Newton's second law, right? Yeah, we, we should have said that according to Newton's second law, uh, that is what we would uh, actually do. All right, ladies and gents, I hope that has been simple enough. Okay. Uh, hopefully we are going to thrash that uh, prelim, right? Hope you're going to do fairly well. Of course, with your favorite uncle's backing, you will do exceptional. All right, otherwise from me for now, I will see you guys next time. Please don't forget to subscribe. Please don't forget to uh, tell as many people that your favorite uncle is giving you good content. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.